Hi, I'm Dr. Peters. This week's quick video is a continuation of our last video talking about the vertebral subluxation. And this week we're going to talk about vertebral subluxation complex. That complex, once you have an injury and the vertebras are not moving properly, leads to com a complex of five specific steps, which I have listed on the board behind me. So before I go over it, Real quick, here I have a spine. I've got the base of the skull or the occiput here, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and the pelvis. Now, in this anatomical model, we also have an example of the psoas muscle coming down and inserting into the medial uh, femur. But in looking at this, if we look at a vertebral body and a disc and a vertebral body, and then those vertebra are allowed to move and glide upon one another at the facet joints. We talked about the vertebral subluxation where the joints aren't moving properly or misaligned. That can put pressure on the nerve. And you can see all the little samples of the nerves coming out. Now, where do these nerves go to? Well, they're going to go to 650 muscles in the body and control those. They're also going to go to the different organ systems within the body, whether it be your, your stomach or your intestines, large or small intestines, or your heart and lungs. So decreased nerve flow obviously is a problem. We want to have increased nerve flow, and you can have as much as 65% nerve root compression and not have any symptoms whatsoever. So now that we've gone over that, let's go over the steps on the board. So again, the vertebral subluxation complex, the first step leading to spinal kinesial pathology. So what does that mean? Spinal, obviously, the spine, which houses the entire spinal cord. Kinesial meaning movement, so we have loss of movement of the spinal vertebras. That will lead to neuropathology. We talked about this. We have the spine and then we have all the nerves that are coming out between every set of vertebra going and feeding the entire body and organ system. Myopathology, well myo simply meaning muscle. So if the nerve is now is not controlling the muscle in the way that it should, now we can get spasm and loss of movement or ex excess excitement in the muscle itself leading to fatigue and spasm. Next, histopathology. Well, um, histopathology would be typically, let's say you slipped and fell and, and landed on an outstretched arm that might jam the joint of the elbow or the wrist or shoulder, but also cause an effect on the ribs and into the spine. And what will happen is people have edema and swelling even away from the area of trauma because of the jarring and jamming motion of the fall. Last, uh, pathophysiology. Looking at it just in the spine itself, when you look at a joint as it begins to lock up and not move properly, that will lead to increased um, osteo, uh, osteophytes and different bone growths or what we would call arthritis. So the point of all this, if someone has a trauma or fall, and it doesn't matter if you're, you know, people think, oh, if you're older, it's more important. Hey, if you're you know, three, four, five years old getting up, running around, slipping and falling down, granted they're more uh, flexible and maybe they can rebound better, but it's good to get everybody checked, whether it's a child or a middle-aged person or someone on Medicare. So again, the idea is we want people to get checked. Don't think of it as how you feel. Think of it as how you function. Even the functioning of your organ systems, which you may not even be aware that there are issues. All right, that's this week's quick video. Thank you.